And this is a message out to the people who say that Muslims mistreat their women and look at the women and females as a lower class than the men. I am talking about John Howard. MashaAllah, he went to the extent of writing a book. I have to agree with him with one little tiny bit. And I'm not trying to be save myself from anything here. Some Muslims, not because of their Islamic nature, it is because of their cultural nature, wherever they're from. Wherever you're from. Cultural nature. My Arabic nature, for example. Yes, some of them, wallahi, are very, very wicked to their wives and very wicked to their daughters. And they mistreat the daughters and they favor the boy and they wish that the daughters were dead. Now, wallahi, this is true. So in a way, I don't blame John Howard. But I wish that he would have just asked for crying out, you're the Prime Minister of the country, you can enter any masjid you want, no one will kill you, don't worry. Just ask. Muslims are not known to do these things. So, one of the first things the Prophet ﷺ did was that he abolished the favorism of boys above girls. The Arabs in those days, they used to bury their daughters alive. They used to practice female infanticide. It's a criminal act of killing your baby daughter. And don't think that this act is not practiced today in some countries. I do not want to mention which countries, but this is actually practiced, the killing of young females. Whether they are in the fetus or whether they are one year old or two years old, they kill them. They kill them, Wallahi al-Azim. Because they have a culture. And the culture is that the boy carries on the name of the family. And when a, when a, when a woman gets married, she has to be a part of the husband's family. Whereas in Islam, the woman must keep her father's surname. Did you know that? When she gets married, like I'm Asad, my wife is Hablus, she still maintains her surname, her father's name. Allah says in the Quran, Ud'uhum li abaihim, huwa aqsatu indallah. Call them by their father's names. This is most just in the eyes of God. Which religion has that? Which? Come on. Which system has that? Not one. To make her independent of her own name? The first thing he abolished was the burying of them alive. I will tell you this story. A man that existed amongst the companions, he used to, like, you'd see him talking normal and smiling or laughing and then suddenly at occasions he would start to cry and cry so much until he went unconscious the companions told the Prophet ﷺ about this man to try and read on him for healing so the Prophet ﷺ called this man and wanted to help him he took him aside and he said what, what, what happens to you my brother? the man said to him Ya Rasulullah I was never going to tell anyone this but now that you've asked me I must tell you before I embraced Islam I used to have a daughter and when she was born I wanted to bury her because the cultural ideology came into my mind. And I started to think that when she grows older, she will bring shame to my family. But I stopped myself. My heart for my daughter was overpowering me. Years and years went by, went by as I watched her grow. And then one day, when she reached close to a blossoming age, she was about to become a lady. He said, I began to have nightmares and desperation and distress the pain of my culturalism came into me thinking of the shame that my daughter is going to bring with me if she walked off with another fellow and brought shame to my, all my ancestors day by day I wanted to do something but then my heart, my love stopped me until one day he said I could not handle it anymore Ya Rasulullah I said to her mother dress her up with, a, with neat clothes and comb her hair nicely and decorate her face and tell her your father today is taking you out to a party a celebration so that she can play with the other friends of hers the mother knew that the father was up to a plot and a plan so she dressed her daughter up she combed her hair while she was crying the mother was crying and she powdered her face and made her nice while the mother was crying the daughter's asking what's wrong mother? And the mother would say nothing, daughter. She's not allowed. Otherwise the husband will beat her. Or probably even kill her. The daughter said, Daddy's taking me out for a celebration. I love my dad. After, after decorating her, the father came along in the evening. And he took his daughter. The wife grabbed, the prophet, grabbed her husband's hand and said to him. And whispered to him. But his daughter could hear. And she said some words that made his heart shiver and the, word, and the daughter to remember لا تضيع الأمانة يا رجل O man, do not lose the trust your daughter is your trust the man took his daughter away and on his way he's thinking to himself 
What am I going to do? And the daughter is playing around her father, thinking that her father loves her. He said, I approached a very deep well which was steep and deep and it had rocks, sharp rocks at the bottom. He said, suddenly the pains and agonies of my culturism came and burnt me. And I began to think, should I throw her? Should I not throw her? So I would come close, then my heart would not let me. Suddenly the culturalism would come in. He said, I wrestled and wrestled. Suddenly, when I came close to the well, I grabbed my daughter and I threw her into the well. And my daughter howled with her open, horrific eyes, looking at me and saying to me, Daddy, la tudayya al amana. Oh, Dad, don't lose the trust. Don't lose the trust, Daddy. And the, Prophet, and the man then threw her into the well. He said, Ya Rasulullah, she kept falling, saying, La tudayya al amana, ya, ya, ya Abi. La tudayya al amana, until her tiny voice went away. I couldn't hear her anymore and she died, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet ﷺ looked up at him and his beard was soaked with tears. And the Prophet's beard was soaked with tears and he said to him, If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to allow me to punish anyone for the killing and murder of anyone before Islam, I would have started with you. I would have started with you. The Prophet ﷺ was the most compassionate, even to the women. And he used to say to them, Mahlam bil qawarir, take care of your precious pearls, your daughters and your wives. Stalsu bin nisa khayra. Have kindness towards your wives and be patient with them. Be patient with them for they make a lot of mistakes and you are not infallible. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you see a bad habit of hers, then remember the good things that she does and overcome that with that and forgive her for her ill comings. He also used to help his wives clean and sew and sometimes even cook Wallahi Al-Azim and look after the children when they were tired except when prayer came Aisha said it's as if the Prophet ﷺ didn't know us he had to remember his Lord the Prophet ﷺ, used to, his first love was Khadija radiallahu anha and she, he never got married to another woman until Khadija radiallahu anha died but in her time he loved her the most and after her he loved her the most until one time Aisha radiallahu saw the Prophet ﷺ sitting with an old woman old woman probably in her 70s and he was talking and laughing like enjoying some stories just stories and Aisha radiallahu got jealous subhanAllah she was very young got jealous of this old woman so she came to the Prophet ﷺ and said to him Ya Rasulullah you know Woman tilka al-ajuz. Who's that old woman? Old and she's young. That's what she's trying to say. The Prophet ﷺ laughed and he said, so she was one of Suwahibatu Khadija. She was one of the friends of Khadija radiallahu anha, which brought an even heavier burden on Aisha radiallahu What? He still remembers his wife and she's dead? He said, she said to him, a friend of Khadija's? He said, but didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you someone better? She means herself. The Prophet ﷺ put a straight face on immediately. And he said to her, لا والله لم يبدلني الله خيرا منها. By Allah, Allah did not replace Khadija رضي الله عنه with anyone better than her, which means you, Aisha. For she is the one who gave victory to me when everyone else left me. She is the one who believed me when everyone else said I'm a liar. She is the one who clothed me and put the blanket on top of me when I was shivering and thinking that I had been hypnotized by some devil and she said to me you are a truthful man an honest man who gives the poor and looks after the needy Allah will not never let you down so she supported me when everyone else left me and Allah gave me from her daughters and sons Aisha radiallahu anha couldn't have any children Aisha radiallahu anha understood her mistake and said Ya Rasulullah forgive me and ask Allah to forgive me Many people have been inflicted by jinns, by possessions, by witchcraft. The first place you can see up on the map is Babylon. And Babylon is of course just so emotional and preserved till today. An encounter of how the Prophet ﷺ. There is a man, his name is Muhammad. And he's a very bad man. He has disunited the people and dis People are more inside of home than outside. Children are more on the television than outside. The narrator says, every time the Prophet ﷺ would meet us in the masjid or see The Dajjal will not appear until people forget about him and the Imams stop men from the Quran. That's what they said. 
It is narrated that the prophets are... One of the evil things they were doing was that of homosexuality, but they had other evils as well. They were 